as you pay your debts and give your offering, uh, may God honor you, may God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So, if you are using till number, it will be on the screen, 58, 18, 54. In case you are a brother, uh, you can use re word remit or whatever. The numbers will be on our screen uh, and God is going to bless us. So 58, 18, 54 uh, plus 254, 72, 25, 72, 363. In case you are a brother, remit or whatever and God is going to bless you. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people this wonderful morning. As they pay their tithes and give their offering, Lord, uh, we command a release. We command a supernatural release, Lord. Uh, let there be a turn around, Lord. Uh, as you say, Lord, uh, you will grant us our heart desire and fulfill all our purpose. I declare over this season, over this period, as they honor you, Lord, may you honor them also, Lord, by granting them their desires and fulfilling all their purposes. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. So you can come give there is a basket on the left and on the right and God is going to bless you. As I welcome the praise and worship, as they do also the special number this wonderful morning and God is going to bless you in Jesus' name. So you can come. There are two baskets God is going to bless you
Shall we rise upon our feet? Hakuna. Take it one more time. Father, we acknowledge that there is no one like you. We thank you because we can gather just to declare this in your house. So Lord, we bless you that this Sunday service is redeemed. Your glory is available. Your, your word finds a free expression. And your presence is established in our midst. So Lord, we are asking that God, you may be glorified continually. Thank you because you beautify every moment that is set for you. Beautify this specific one. Let your hand rest upon this mountain. And let it be that God, you will again be glorified for everything you will do. The healing, the open doors, the miracle, the clarity of instruction, the release of grace, the breakthrough that you're bringing to the life of somebody. Father, receive all the glory in advance. And Lord, be praised in Jesus' name. Somebody shout a good amen. If you love the Lord Jesus, clap your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's so good to see you today. Uh -huh. Turn to another one. Tell them again, neighbor, it's so wonderful to see you. Praise the Lord. Now, last Sunday, we agreed the people that come for first service come for top layer. They come for what? Top layer. Yeah, if you, in case you went to the high school like I went for, uh, we had what we call top layer. That one, the, the, the type of uh, meat you would receive, you would never be the same again. May you receive your top layer in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, this is a top layer service. Praise the Lord. So welcome to those of you that have just joined us online. We are glad you have done so. This is Word of Light Center Eldred and we believe that you are being blessed even as we continue. Please find the liberty of sharing, start a watch party and let the Lord bless you. Praise Him, God bless you. Thank you for the wonderful work and you guys are looking glorious. Amen. While we are standing, we are in the book of Romans chapter number 1. Verses number 11 to verses number 13. Romans 1, verses 11 to verses number 13. So we will read it together. Uh, this is our month of return. Somebody say return. Say it like you are in the top layer service. Say again return. So it's our month of return. We are returning back to God. Back to our spiritual disciplines. Back to our spiritual values. Back to our dreams and our visions or projects. And we are also returning back to the house of the Lord. Uh, last Sunday, I tilted it to the second level and the Holy Spirit in me had released in my heart a burden to speak on the principle of impartation. The principle of impartation and we began it last Sunday and uh, we are building the same uh, even up until this Sunday before we can cross over to the coming month where we are expecting that God will begin to release a harvest in the month of uh, September. So Romans 1 verse 11 is on the screen if in case you don't have your Bible, but I do believe you have. We will read it all together. Are we ready? All right. So let's go together. I want to go. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you 
and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. The word of the Lord is blessed. Somebody shout, Amen. Please, you may have your seats in God's presence. I began last week to speak about certain types or classes of believers. There were four in number. Uh, I spoke about the religious believer. I spoke about the carnal believer. I spoke about the condemned believer. And I spoke about the strong believer. I later on went ahead to speak about the uh, meaning of the word impartation, which in the Hebrew is the word chalak. The word chalak, which is the word, I mean, spelled C-H-A-L-A-Q. C-H-A-L-A-Q. The word chalak simply means to share or to give a part of. To share or to give a part of. So that is to say that anytime somebody receives an impartation, it is actually somebody being given a part of what another actually has. Numbers chapter 11, uh, rather Numbers chapter 27 and verses number 18 to verses number 20. Numbers 27 verse 18 to verse 20 reveals a story when God had commanded Moses to chalak or to give a part of what he carried to the young man called Joshua in verse number 20. God tells this man called Moses that he will give a part of your honor even unto him. A part over your honor or some of your honor unto him. And the reason was very clear that all the congregation of Israel may be obedient. In other words, God knew very well that Moses would not become an effective leader if there was no impartation given unto him. Everything we are in life is actually a chalak affair. One of the things that we have to agree whenever we are dealing with DNA, all of us have taken a part of our mother and our father. If you've ever heard of something we call crossbreeding, if you've heard of what we call crossbreeding, the purpose behind crossbreeding is that they would take a weak gene and connect it with a stronger gene. If they get to discover that there is an animal that is weak and they realize that the genes of that animal are not producing what they would actually expect. For example, there is no longevity in that animal. It does not produce good milk. It is. It does and produce the right product and it is not strong enough to be able to survive uh, the climatical changes what they would do is to do what we call cross breeding the reason behind cross breeding is that they would take the genes of a stronger breeder and they would connect it to that one which is weaker so that the genes of the stronger one would end up imparting strength to the one that is actually weaker now this is what we actually have in second corinthians chapter 5 and verses number 17 second corinthians 5 and verses number 17 the bible says very clearly to those of us that are in christ jesus we have now become a new specimen we have become a new creature therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature or a new specimen i want you to take note of that that the moment we came into christ there were new genes imparted in us in the book of john chapter number one john chapter number one from verses number 12 john 1 from verses number 12 the bible says but as many as received him to them he gave the power to become not the children of god but the sons of god somebody say i'm a son of god Say it like you believe it. Say again, I am a son of God. He said they have been given the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Look at verse number 13. So see where there was a cross breeding. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So what God did, God knew the genetics we possess in terms of humanity is a fallen genetic. We are weak as human beings. We have genetical challenges. Listen to me. Whenever people talk of generational curses, one of the things that you have to realize, a curse is born from an iniquity. The word iniquity is different from the word transgression. So there are three classes whenever we are dealing with sin. There is sin which is basically falling away from God or missing the mark. There is transgression. Transgression simply means to move away from your ordained path or to break the law then there is what we call iniquity iniquity simply means a cycle or a tendency towards a specific sin so for example if in your bloodline there is a weakness of immorality you would notice that somewhat it begins to follow you so you will hear people saying Damu yetu, kwa jami inapenda wanawake. so somebody just has a weakness of falling into immorality if in your bloodline there is polygamous tendency you will see polygamy beginning to manifest if in your bloodline 
there is a weakness of a certain disease you will see the same disease so somewhat the doctor will sit you down he will ask you the history of your family because he now notices you are struggling with high blood pressure you're 35 you're only 20 years of age already struggling so he follows your history so that he can be able to tell your genetics if he notices that even in your family there is cancer he warns you and he begins to prepare you in advance why because your bloodline shows where you will move towards in the future can you hear me if you hear me say i hear you so what exactly happens and i want you to listen to me carefully here therefore if in my bloodline there is an iniquity an iniquity is a tendency towards a specific sin in the bible there is an example of a man known as abraham the scripture records when abraham had actually had his wife who was 70 years of age he began a journey in genesis chapter number, number 12. in the journey he began he landed in a place called egypt later on he traveled to another place in the philistine the two times he could not defend his wife because of the beauty of his wife the thing that you must realize abram therefore told the wife that you will tell them you're my sister so you notice in that bloodline there was a tendency to lie number one number two there was a tendency to love beautiful women beauty is basically in the eye of the beholder but uh, there is what we define as beauty are you understanding me yeah i think you understand what i'm trying to say the thing that you cannot ignore is what we call beauty are you hearing me if something is general it's not beautiful but what you can't ignore uh, okay, let me continue. So anyway, what I was simply trying to say is that in that bloodline, there were two major weaknesses. Number one, the first weakness was a weakness of lies. Number two, the second weakness was a weakness of going for beautiful women. How do we know it? We look at Isaac. The Bible records very well at the time Isaac wanted to marry. The father was very specific. The father sent what we call Eliezer to locate a wife for him. And the wife was known as Rebecca. Listen to me carefully. Rebecca, the Bible records, was very beautiful. How do we know? Genesis chapter 26. The same temptation the father fell into. Later on, we notice this man called Isaac falls in the same temptation. The Bible records he was in the land of the Philistine. And because of the beauty of Rebecca, listen to what the scripture says. He told the wife, say you are my sister. So notice two things. Lies. And number two, beauty then we see the grandchild the grandchild of abraham is known as jacob when jacob goes ahead to marry notice there were two women he was supposed to marry the first one he wanted to marry if you study your bible carefully was rachel because she was beautiful in the eye she rejected leah it's only she was conned and later on she ended up marrying the same this same woman called leah so in that bloodline you see jacob operating with lies you see isaac operating with lies you see abraham operating with lies in that bloodline you will also notice that they loved beautiful women that was their weakness the question that i will ask you what is in your bloodline everyone must learn to understand in every bloodline there is an iniquity and a curse but this is where the story turns around the bible says in john chapter number one and verse number 12 let's go back there again john 1 and verse 12 so that is why i told you that whenever we are talking of impartation it means to chalak to share to give a part of and why we need impartation is because god wants to give himself to us and because of jesus he has given a part of himself so look at this again but as many as have received him many have you received him if you have received him shout i have received him as many as have received him what has he done he has given them the power to become what so what did he do he gave us jesus he chalaked us jesus he gave us a part of himself jesus is god my God, I feel I'm teaching better than you're shouting. Amen. So he knew our genes were weaker. We are the genes of sin. Psalms chapter number 51. I was born in iniquity. And I was born in sin and wrought in iniquity. So every human being is a sinner. But when we received Jesus. Oh, I need a better amen. When we received Jesus, there was a cross beating. There was an exchange. So the genes that were weak were overpowered with stronger genes. The Bible says those that received him, I wish I had an amen right here. He has given them the power to be called the sons of God. So no longer do I have the genes of weakness. My genes were translated. That is why impartation is very important. If you are not born again, you need to be born again. Why? Because God shared himself with us. We are not in the Old Testament where God came among them we are in the New Testament where God dwells in us God chalaked himself God imparted himself on us so no longer do we who are born again talk about generational curses no longer do we who are born again talk about generational iniquity do you know why there was an impartation I wish I had an amen right here I said there was an impartation 
Okay, go back now. Look at this scripture again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And I want you to think through it again. The reason why impartation is very critical. Listen to me, by yourself, you will fall in sin. By yourself, you will struggle with that bloodline problem. By yourself, you will struggle in your salvation. But when you allow chalak, that is why Christ grows in you. The more he grows in you, the stronger you become. I wish I had an amen right here. Let me get a more louder amen. So let's read this scripture one more time. Are you ready for this? Let's take it one to go. Therefore, uh -huh, being Christ, he is what? Okay. All things are what? Pastor, we behold what? Why? Because there was a chalak. Christ came in us. The weaker gene was now overpowered with the stronger gene. Remember I told you crossbreeding is where one person who is a farmer recognizes that this animal does not have a long lifespan. Does not produce a right product. Is weak and sickly. Cannot fit in different climates. For example, there are cows that I cannot take to Busia. In the place where I come from, it's very hot. In the place where I come from, it's slightly dry. So if I take them there, they cannot be able to survive. So the only way my dad succeeded is that he decided to do what we call a cross breed. The moment he did a cross breed, there was another. Let me give you another story which I gave last year. My dad came from uh, Busia. And the moment he had just arrived, he called me Pancras. Where are you? I told him where I was. He said, I want you to check for me chicken. Then he was very clear. He told me, I want you to get for me pure kienyeji. I said, Dad, I don't understand you. He said, mark my words. I want pure kienyeji. I don't even want the one that is mixed. So I didn't understand him until he arrived. And that is when he began to tell me, I had bought those ones. The first ones, which are actually when I took them to the village, one disease appeared and they all died. So he looked at me and he told me, the only one I want that can survive any disease is pure Kenyage. Hey! Pure Kenyage believers. May you become Kenyage that you can survive even Corona. Somebody shout an amen right here my dad taught me a lesson from that and that is the same thing i'm trying to tell you now look at this scripture it says if any man be in christ so the question is why is it then some believers still struggle listen carefully why do they still struggle with generational iniquity and curses now the answer is very simple remember the moment you came to christ the curse was broken you cannot be saved and be cursed at the same time galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 let's go there please stay with me i want to teach you until you get this thing the moment you got born again curses died Curses are no longer existent in your bloodline. Because there was a chalak. Christ came into you. Your genes were altered. Where is your amen? Give me a better amen. So in your bloodline, you don't have weaknesses. You only have strengths. In your bloodline, you don't fall in immorality. You live in holiness. In your bloodline, you don't struggle with lies. You operate with truth. In your bloodline, you don't struggle with poverty. Riches are your reality. In your bloodline, the curse does not operate. Oh my God, I wish I had three people to shout amen right here. You live in the reality of the blessed. In your bloodline, people don't die. They live longer. They live until the day they would want to go to the grave. In your bloodline, there is no failure. The only thing that is there is success. In your bloodline, people do not know shame. Whatever they know is victory after victory. In your bloodline, even though you may face trouble, you know very well the Lord will deliver you from all affliction. In your bloodline, I wish I had an amen right here. People are never the tail. You are always above and above only. In your bloodline, you are blessed in any city. Wherever you go, the blessing is active in your life. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah, right here. So watch this scripture. The Bible says Christ has done what? Redeemed us. Somebody say, I'm redeemed. Say it like you're in church. Say again, I'm redeemed. What has he redeemed us from? From the curse. So there's no curse over your life. Any curse operating on you, I break it right now. You will never be limited in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm coming, but I want to teach us again. You will never be limited in the name of Jesus. No curse will operate in your children. No curse will operate in your bloodline. No curse will bring sicknesses to you. No curse will attack your generation. Why? Because you are redeemed. I said you are redeemed. I said again, you are redeemed. Lift up your right hand. Repeat after me. Say, I have Christ in me. There is no curse in my life. Say it cannot work over my life because my genetics are the genetics of Christ. Say after me in the name of Jesus, anything attempting to destroy the blessing, say by the power of the blood, by 
by the power of the blood by the power of Christ dwelling in me say it shall not prosper say the blessing is in me the life of God is in me the nature of God is in me say I can never fail I can never backslide I can never be defeated I can never suffer shame I have the seed of God on the inside of me if you believe it give Jesus a clap offering of praise right here so listen carefully curses can be taught to unbelievers to believers the enemy can only attempt to attack you because of your ignorance please follow me carefully ignorance number one two of your lack of watching what god has already invested in you so now this is where i want to explain better because you can be in christ and still struggle with issues so galatians chapter number four and verses number 19 quickly let's go there galatians 4 and verse 19 are you getting something if you're getting something somebody say i hear you all right so i want you to understand there are reasons why god is building you let's read this scripture together what does it say one to go my little children of whom i do what travail in birth until what now these are born again people please stay with me they are saved they know god but paul says i travail traveling there is not just prayer it is laboring that means to teach you to preach to you to spend time in fellowship with you to encourage you and also to pray for you he says i labor and i travel why why am i traveling that christ be formed now why was he talking about so listen they already have christ in them even though they have the nature of christ in them what paul was saying is that i want christ to increase in you the more he grows in you the more any side of your life you struggle you begin to overcome that is the reason why chalak is very critical now look at romans 1 and verse 11 back again let's go back there then you will be able to understand in romans 1 11 paul was very clear he says i long to see you why that i may impart in you i want to chalak you what am i going to give you some gift i want you to understand there are people god has given graces in different areas I wish I had an amen right here. The reason why a minister stands on the platform to minister is to be able to give you strength in an area you don't have strength. To be able to give you impartation in an area you don't have impartation. For example, some of you right now, even as you're seated here, to read the Bible is hard work. But if you really submit under grace and you are hungry to begin to increase in revelation, believe me, even after this service, you will begin to notice reading five chapters is not an issue. Why? Chalak. I need an amen right here. Shall I? So watch this. He says, I long to see you that I may impart in you some spiritual gift. That at the end, watch this, you may be strengthened, established. So today I want to speak about the reasons for Chalak. Very quickly. Reasons why impartation is very critical. And please, I want you to understand, you can never get what you don't hunger for. You can never receive what you do not respect. You can never partake of what you are not craving after. Everything that God will ever give to you, you have to cry for it. He will never force you to get saved. You have to realize your need of salvation. God will never force you to pray. You have to realize your need of it. What is the area you're deficient? Any area you're struggling in, you cry to God and God transmits it to you. So number one, why do we need chalak? The first simple reason is for establishment in any area of your life. God wants to establish you in any area that you're actually struggling in. Kenneth Copeland several years ago was a struggling preacher. Copeland at this particular time attended two ministers meeting. The first one was Oral Roberts ministry and the second one was Kenneth Copeland ministry. This man called Copeland had fallen into depression. Copeland said he attended the meeting of I mean, Kenneth Hagen. He saw the sobriety of the man and he made up his mind. He will pursue the cassettes, the tapes of this man and the books. So he gave out his vehicle in desire to receive the material for impartation. The moment he was driving in the car, I've given the story over and over. They had the vehicle moving and people were worried. What vehicle is that? Kenneth Hagen was asking who has brought that car here. You know, they are vehicles that bring embarrassment. So anyway, he was told it's a man called Kenneth Copeland. He has come here because he's looking for material from you. So he said very clearly, what exactly does he need? He said, he wants your books. He wants your tapes. If you can only give it to him, all he wants is to exchange that with his vehicle. 
The guy was told, give him everything he requires, but let him go away with his vehicle. Copeland took away all the tapes, took away all the books, and went away with them. The second minister he attended for the meeting for was Oral Roberts. He sat down, saw the sobriety of the man, saw the prosperity of Oral Roberts. The first word, the words that we always say, God is good. And all the time, God is good. The man who began to say those words was a man called Oral Roberts. Roberts began to preach this when people believed that poverty was together with righteousness. Roberts began to say, no, whenever we deal with righteous people, they must prosper. So Copeland sat down, had Oral Roberts. He later on decided to take his materials. They locked themselves for two weeks. Two weeks. Reading the books, studying and listening to the tapes. And Copeland says that was a turnaround of his financial future. Copeland gives a testimony and says later on he began to break into a dimension of financial favor. Let me give examples. The first aeroplane a Bishop or a depot ever received came from Kenneth Copeland ministry. The first amount of money that changed the ministry of Reynard Bonke came from Copeland ministry. Are you still hearing me today? The first aeroplane Jesse Duplantis ever received came from Copeland ministry. The first aeroplane uh, there is this black American. I remember it was this man called Kenneth. Kenneth no longer gives out just money. He can give out aeroplanes. He will give you a pilot and fuel it for one year. People asked him what is the secret. He gave them the secret. He said he knew there was an area he was not established. He noticed his money was never stable. He noticed he was sometimes having money. Sometimes he would lack money. So he said in that area he needed to overcome. And he sat down with materials and he received a chalak. Listen to me. There is an area God can establish you. If you are struggling morally, you can break free. God can set you free there. Please let me get an amen. Why should I be struggling morally and I'm reading scriptures for prosperity? It does not work. If I know my area is morality, let me get scriptures that deal with that area. I get Romans chapter 6. Submit your members unto God as members of righteousness. I said, which members? You already know the members. I get Romans chapter 7 and I will read how Paul was also struggling. If you read Romans 7, you will get to discover Paul struggled with masturbation. Which other problem was it? It was just moral problems. He said, I want to do good, but there's no power. So if Paul struggled, eh, then we are all struggling. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the same Paul reaches a level. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? Then he concludes with a solution. He said, yet with my mind, I will serve God, or the law of God. And with my heart, with my body rather, the law of sin. So I see Paul. I say, if Paul made it, I'm coming out. I come on, somebody give me a better amen. I study, I look at my life, I see, ah, ah, there is an area I'm struggling with in terms of depression. So if I notice I'm struggling in depression, I begin to go to Psalms. I study all the scriptures, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Please, I need an amen right here. Yes, if I notice I'm always struggling with loneliness, I get scriptures. I get the book of Isaiah. None shall lack a mate, I stand on it. I say, Lord, you will cause it to come to pass. I studied the way Eliezer was sent by Abraham. I said, Lord, send an Eliezer on my behalf. If I need marriage, I don't begin to pray prayers of money again. If it's marriage you want, be specific. Are you still here? You know, sometimes many believers are never specific on how to deal with God. So the first reason Chalak is important is to establish you in an area. If you're struggling in prayer, look for scriptures that will help you in that area. Get men of God that preach on prayer until you come out. A lady who was actually in a particular church serving together with her husband and the husband became confused. They were very wealthy. Became confused by one funny prophet. The prophet told him the reason why you're failing is because of your wife. So later on the prophet said you need to go to a certain baba. And he attended this baba shrine. And the baba told the, I mean the, the husband I have to live in your house if your wife will leave. And so they hosted the Baba. <laughs> Are you still hearing me? And the Baba was in this house. The lady later on went to the pastor and told the pastor that my husband has even brought a witch, a witch doctor in my house. He has given him the best room just with one idea to jack me out of this house. That man would literally make slaughters and shed blood and do sacrifices to discourage the woman. When the guy went and told the, and the lady went and told the pastor, the pastor sent intercessors. When they arrived in the house and they saw the sacrifices, they told the woman, we will not pray here. We will pray in church and that was the end of prayer the woman was so discouraged because some people see things and they feel if they will try to pray satan will attack them so she attended a church called mountain of fire somebody say mountain of fire when she was there she noticed how people were praying they were not praying ordinarily 
not quietly or English-like or kneeling with postures like they are talking to God like he's a, he's a queen of England. They realize these were two Africans who were praying, shaking all over. Then he had the man of God say full body prayer. And then that's when he understood full body prayer means shake every part of your being. You literally, you release yourself. And then he noticed the pastor began to teach them on midnight prayer. And as he noticed that the lady was so moved, at the end of the service, he insisted for an appointment, sat down with Pastor Lukayo. As I sat down, Pastor Lukayo looked at her and asked her, what is the issue? The lady explained. And then the lady was asked a question. All right, so are you the one who cooks for the man, I mean, for this particular baba? He said, yes, I am the one. Can you imagine even my husband makes me do that? He said, oh my God, you're a foolish woman. He said, Pastor, how can you enjoy me like that? That is wicked. He said, I'm telling you something that you must learn. When you will cook for him next pray over the food begin to command the power of god to rest on it the woman got to hear that say hey pastor continue then now she was sent the woman went he said the blood of jesus holy ghost fire and added holy ghost acid she did every prayer then began to serve this fellow the baba ate that day at midnight the baba woke up shouting there is fire in this house there is fire in this house there is fire in this house so the man came out and said, what is the problem? He said, fire is in this house. The Baba was just crying, fire is in this house. The woman knew where the fire came from. That Baba left that house and that is how God delivered the marriage. Do you know, if there is an area you are struggling, look for impartation. Look for an impartation in that area. If you know you are struggling financially, do not struggle looking for scriptures over how you should get good relationships. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has always given us a word to attack any situation we are having. There is always a word. I need an amen right here. There is always. That is one reason why whenever you pick the scriptures, God says, I want to give you establishment in that area. I will settle you. You will never struggle again. Some of you know very well, even where you are, you received an impartation. None of you used to pray the way you pray up until right now. You knew very well there was a day you encountered God. That's how your prayer turned around. Even the way you worship. Some of you used to be very nice English worshippers. You worship like this. But one day you encountered God and your worship turned around. I need a better amen right here. So number one, the first reason is establishment. Number two, second reason why Chalak is very critical. I may not finish everything. Is for improvement. God wants your life upgraded. Improvement and upgrading. Numbers chapter number six and verses 22 to verse 27. And today I want to pray for somebody here. Any area of your life you are struggling, grace will come your way. I said grace will come your way. I say again, grace will come your way. Numbers chapter number 6. Look at this from verses number 22 to verse 27. It's a blessing. Uh, this is one of the things that I would want us to do in this church. Uh, I will ask Mr. Emmanuel together with the team uh, to believe in this song at the end of the service. It's known as a blessing. It's a common song. Numbers 11. So let's read this scripture together. Verses number 22. We are going all the way down up until the end. Are we ready? It's on the screen. Let's go together. One to go and. Uh-huh. Saying. Uh-huh. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you will bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Continue, look at this. The Lord bless thee, and do what? Keep thee. Let's continue. The Lord make his face to do what? Shine upon you. Continue. And be gracious unto thee. Let's continue. The Lord do what? Lift up his what? Continence upon what? And give you what? All right, now look at the last one. And they shall do what? Put my name upon what? The children of Israel, and I will do what? So God says, when the priests will stand up, listen carefully, and open their mouth and declare their blessing, what they are doing is sharing something with you. And he's saying here, the moment they will open up their mouth and chalak you, then they are putting my name on them. So that I, God, will mark them, and I will bless them myself. I wish I had somebody to get this thing. I want you to understand that the second reason impartation is important is because it improves. It upgrades. It brings somebody to a dimension they have never been able to enter. Listen to me. Never deceive yourself that you are not a prayer warrior. Let no one ever lie to you. You can never become a millionaire. That millionaires is only given to a certain few. Let no one ever lie to you that you should remain single. That probably God just ordained that in your life you should remain celibate and serve him that way. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Every aspect of your life can receive an upgrade. It only comes when there is a chalak. Oh my God, I wish I... I want you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor there can be an upgrade. You can pray more than you are praying today. You can love more than you are loving today. Before the end of this year, God can give you a wonderful man you have never imagined. 
I need an amen right here. Your finances can improve at the end of the day. Please listen to me. The second reason impartation is important is for improvement. I joined Petra Ministry in 1997. I really wanted to pray and to fast. The first time I ever fasted, I fasted until 4 o'clock and I nearly died. I've never forgotten that. I provoked myself into faith. I said I wanted to fast. I had headaches I had never had. By 4, I had to break it because I thought I would die. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? That is the first time. The first time then I ever took three days drinking water or tea. Full day. I remember we went to a place called Cataloni. Some of you know Cataloni back in Mayakus. Are you understanding me? And we went for three. That was the first time. The only advantage I had is that we were at least five of us. When you're many fasting together, it's slightly easier. But I remember that time sometimes I would feel so dry. I want tea. Today I can fast for 50 days. It's not a prayer item. But it's something that came because I really desired it. At first, when I began, I thought I would die. One particular person, I remember, who joined this ministry. And we had declared a fast, came and asked me a question. And told me, Pastor, but you know, I have certain diseases. Will the fasting agree with it? You know, let me be honest. That person broke out and began to fast. And guess what? The first three days of her fasting, God healed that problem. She actually had ulcers. She got healed while fasting. Are you still here? The area where you need an improvement, there is grace. God can release it to you. May you receive it today. I want you to lift your right hand and say, I receive an upgrade in every area of my life. I like giving stories for people to understand. Kenneth Copeland did a meeting. And while he was doing the meeting, he called one of his sons to collect offering. The son stood up together with the wife and they challenged the people before collecting the offering. We are talking of a group of people of about 17,000 people in number, seated together in a conference. He stood up and he provoked all of them and he said, the man who gave the story is E.A. Adeboe, Pastor E.A. Adeboe. He said he saw this guy stand up together with the wife. And the guy opened his mouth, he said, the Lord has challenged us to challenge all of you here. That each one of you, whatever you will give, combine and cooperate, we will double it with my wife. You're talking of 17,000 people. You don't know how many millionaires are there. When you make such a statement, you must be sure that you had God. They went ahead and collected all the money. After they collected all they had, they later went on waited for the declaration of how much it was. It was roughly close to about 20 million or so. And so it was known and people are clapping. The moment they were actually clapping, now people were waiting to see what the man and the wife will do. The man stood up and said, is that all you can give God? The people are quiet. They want to see. So you're just opening your mouth. Give us actions. The guy wrote a check and doubled it and gave it out. This man called Ia Deboy said he got delivered from stinginess. He said he left there and he knew God has saved him from stinginess. You know, in the African culture, there are tribes that just have stinginess by nature. The only way you can get free out of that and improve is whenever you are in an environment of impartation. People always believe that in Kenya, the greatest givers are Kikuyus. And it is a known affair. It is an own affair. If you ever meet a lawyer or meet a law, it's a prayer item before they give money. These are realities. But when you are in this ministry, you will see it a bit differently. That's why I'm saying it's a chalak affair. No, I need an amen right here. Look at Kenya. And I want you to take note of this. I'm about to close. Look at the way in different tribes, there are different manifestations. And I want you to observe this. You would notice when we talk of class, even vehicle-wise, house-wise, you will notice laws are the ones that know how to live. All right? You will see several years ago, a Kikuyu can have millions but do a pro box and dress in a way that you will never know he has money. But I want you to see the invert today. You will notice that even a Kikuyu will pimp his right. You will notice laws have now understood the need of investing in business. You will realize that there were tribes that believed in education only. I was one of them. I was raised in that culture. My dad believed that you can never make it unless you went to school. And as I grew up, I discovered the richest people are not the ones that went to school. No, I need an amen right here. So all of a sudden, you will realize now lawyers are discovering business is necessary. Now, am I still here? KCs have jumped into it. Lawyers are already in it. Oh, come on, give me an amen. Fine living is now distributed somewhat. What the laws used to have, all of a sudden, everyone is beginning to do it. In Kenya, if you drive pro box, we will laugh at you. No matter how much money you have. Are you still here? Now, why am I trying to give these examples? You will notice it is what we call exchange. 
It's called impartation. It is where tribes discover that the strengths we have been having, we can interchange with each other. That is one of the core reasons why church is very critical. Because whenever you come to an assembly like this one, you will notice that all of a sudden there's somebody who has what you don't have. You are broken hearted. You walked into church. Then you notice another one crying before God. Even if you are low, energy will enter you. You walked into church, you never wanted to sing. Emmanuel, together with his team, release a praise all of a sudden. No, I need an amen right here. Energy entered you. You walk into I mean, to church. You are asking God, give me a word. One word comes and oh my God. You receive energy to rise again. Bishop Allah went to preach in a couple's meeting. He said he prayed and asked God, give me a word. God told him, preach on holiness. He said, God, you must be confused. I'm going to a couple's meeting. I should not be preaching on holiness. God told him, preach on that. And then all of a sudden he stood up. He said he preached for 30 minutes and he knew that day he never delivered the word. He said he felt dry. And after the service, a young man came to see him and called him aside. I said, sir, I want to say thank you. He said, I don't understand you. He said, I want to say thank you so much for hearing God for me. He said, what do you mean? He said, I walked into this couple's meeting knowing it was a couple's meeting. But I asked God to speak to me. And when you stood up and opened that scripture, I knew it was God. The man went out to say, when you began to preach on holiness, I was about to go ahead to commit suicide. But when I heard that I can make it, I stood up. Can you imagine God organized a meeting for one man? Even right now as I'm preaching, there is a person here. God has just ordained that as you're hearing as I am teaching, something is coming your way. So number two, it improves. One of the prayers I want to pray as we are closing today is that God will bring an improvement in somebody's life. Any area you are struggling, right now we are doing seven days, we are finishing seven day fasting tomorrow. Any area you are struggling, I want to believe God, it will change today. I want to believe God, God will give a permanent answer right here. I want to believe God, God will break that struggle with permanence. Somebody needs to shout a loud amen right here. Why? It's called impartation. Stand up on your feet, let us pray. Stand up on your feet, I want us to pray. I want you to take this prayer point with all seriousness. Now, I can't be able to cover everything. But I believe that God has given us what we need. Can you lift your hands? I want you to pray with me right now. Are you ready? If you're ready, shout, I am ready. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift up my hands and open my mouth towards you, you know the area where I have a deficiency and I need to come out of that struggle today in the name of Jesus. Whether it is my prayer life, my Bible study, my moral life, my social life whether it is my financial life say father i need an establishment lord i ask you to bring a permanent answer lift up your right hand a permanent answer in my life through the word of god by impartation my dreams are turning around today my spiritual life is turning around today i receive an impartation right now Say, I break every stronghold. Lift your hands and shout, I break every stronghold in that area by the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the name of Jesus. Say, I remove that nature. It is not my portion. It is not my portion. It is not my portion. Say, I receive today the impartation of Christ in that area. The impartation of Christ in that area. Say, I declare no curse shall prevail. No limitation shall prevail. No weakness shall prevail. I command strength. I command the blessing. I command increase. I command peace. I command progress. I release myself right now from this area by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus and by impartation today. I want you to open your mouth for 60 seconds. I want you to deal with that area right now. that area pray over that area listen that area God can establish you right there I want you to pray for that area father in my social life father in my financial life 
I call a change of genetics. I call an impartation today. Let Christ grow stronger in that area. I break that area. I declare I will not struggle again. I command that area to outside my life. I open my prayer life. I open the windows of my destiny. The windows of my finances. I command establishment here. Things will not be changing. Things will not be the same way. I command in this area. In Jesus name. Quickly let's take the second prayer. Lift up your hands. Now we want impartation for upgrade. In that area where you feel you need God to take you higher. Where you feel God must answer. I want you to pray. Are you ready for that? Come on if you're ready shout a good amen. Is it your financial life you need an upgrade? Your social life you need an upgrade? Is it in your working place you need an upgrade? I want you to pray. Say heavenly father. Christ is in me. I'm a different species. And because of Christ in me. Oh you need to pray a lot. Because of Christ in me. I have the impartation of God in my life. His nature is in me. Therefore, my life must improve. Say, I command this area over my life. Mention that area before you continue. Mention it, mention it. Say, now in the name of Jesus, I declare that this area, you are improving. Lift up your hands. You are doing what they are saying. You are improving. My prayer life, my spiritual life, financial life, social life, work life. Say, I command you now. Improve in the name of Jesus. Improve in the name of Jesus. Improve in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to open your Pray aggressively. Pray with all your heart. Pray with all your heart. Come on, don't limit your prayer. Pray with all your heart. Listen, I'm giving you 60 more seconds. Address that area. Command it to improve. Command that area to improve. Because of the nature of God in you, command it. Lord, I'm not going back in this area again. I'm improving. I am not stagnant in this area. I'm improving in my financial life, in my destiny, in my social life, in my spiritual life. I command an improvement today. Somebody open your mouth right now. Declare. Yes, Lord. Now lift your hands. Begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. If you can't speak in tongues, speak in any other language. Just open your mouth. Let me get the praise team here. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. I feel God putting in my spirit. That there's somebody here who's been crying for a change. God wants to do it today. Lift up your hands. I want to release this impartation. Spirit of God, we have waited on you. People walked in here praying concerning issues. You know it more than ever before. That area where somebody has never had breakthroughs and progress. Today as I open my mouth as a man of God, I break that limitation. I break that limitation. I command by the word in my mouth, the blessing gives you progress. The blessing upgrades your destiny. The blessing makes you advance. I say to you, it will not take very long. I say to you, there will be no more delay. I call you to your next level. I call you to your place of answers. I call you to your place of upgrade. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. I declare over your prayer life. Receive an upgrade. I command your prayer life to upgrade. I command your spiritual life to upgrade. I command your revelation in terms of the word to upgrade. I command your social life to upgrade. I command your financial life to upgrade. And I command today you are breaking limits. 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 Lift your hands. Paul says, I long to see you, that I may impart in you, that at the end you may be established. Anything that has been troubling you over and over, today I command it to end. Listen, there's an anointing here. I declare it ends. And I declare you are established in victory. You are established in victory. In that area, affliction shall not rise again a second time. 
in that area you will never regress a second time in that area you will never pray about it a second time i say you are established from today i say to you you will never mention that prayer again you will never cry about it again you will never weep about it again you will never struggle about it again as you will leave this church today you are living with an establishment in that area you are living with an answer in that area you are living with a solution in that area you are living with a breakthrough in that area oh my god i feel the holy ghost i say you are living with an answer as you will step out of this church the same god who anointed eli to prophesy to hannah and hannah left with an answer you are living here with an answer today no more weeping no more tears no more crying about it no more negative cycles i declare a change today in the name of jesus if you believe it lift your hands i want you to clap to god and shout to him here today now your clap looks like you are not yet there can you lift your hands above your head those are your hands not your neighbor's hands so they are sanitized and none of your hands has corona if they do they died in jesus name somebody shout amen are you ready to clap i shout to three and i want you to lift up god with a shout one two three shout to god right here come on shout unto the lord here today hallelujah amen god has actually just shown me something many of you over this week will touch what you never ever imagined over years that every time you felt you are in fact god is telling me you are always around the breakthrough it slips away god says this week you will touch it that money will not slip away that opportunity will not run away from you again god says it is a done deal somebody shout a good amen right here amen so we are closing this service those of you that have joined us we thank god for you and we are praying that many of you here god will be able to help you we are about we'll be starting our second service by about 11 30 11 45 11 uh, 35 rather because we've just extended a little bit but we believe you're blessed i want to encourage you to do something tomorrow we are going to be having prayers we have been doing seven day fasting my body is actually slightly tired because of this and we are finishing tomorrow probably you never even were fasting or maybe you never knew about it but i wanted to ask us to do something tomorrow we come for lunch hour is that okay if you hear me say i hear you we come for lunch hour so that we can be able to pray together i will be here and we break bread and take communion together so let me ask you to join us tomorrow we are here at one o'clock for only one hour we'll be done up until about two o'clock and then we will release you but just come let's prophesy let's believe god the seven days will bring an answer remember even if you have not been fasting you can do it just for tomorrow somebody say amen lift your hands for the blessing now may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may he cause his face to shine upon you may the lord elevate you on every side answer your prayers make you a sign in a wonder cause your neighbors to admire you wherever you are go out with an answer and may your life be an upgrade this season in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit amen and amen so god bless you god bless you beloved please one more announcement uh, there has been a question about saturday prayers people coming to wait on god for the sunday service yesterday uh we were supposed to have saturday but we never announced it so what we have done yesterday i was just here with somebody we did it just between one to two so we are reinstating it this coming saturday uh so i think now you're okay this coming saturday from two o'clock to three o'clock we want to welcome those of you that can join us please be here remember lunch hour tomorrow it will only be monday then we come back on wednesday thursday and friday the purpose of tomorrow is just to conclude the fasting together is that okay if you hear me say i hear you so if you're working sacrifice that time talk to your boss ask them to release you then jump this way if you're doing business please sacrifice just come let's make a conclusion together i love you all god bless you in jesus name to you mr emmanuel
Weni mungu, tunaina matunaino katukisema kuhu 